Ferrets, are they the perfect holy grail of all pets created just for you, or an absolute nightmare, dead set on wreaking havoc and destruction upon your entire household as well as your wallet? Maybe a little bit of both? Let's find out. Hey guys, it's Haley from Modern Ferret, and today I will be going over the biggest pros and cons to ferret ownership. This list is based off of my own experience with three ferrets for the last eight years, as well as the experiences of ferret owners I interviewed around the country and recent feedback I got from our global ferret community. I'd like to start with all the pros, which is always the most fun part to talk about. Hopefully by the end of this series, you can feel more confident in your decision to bring this pet into your home or not. The first pro I want to mention is how cute and funny ferrets are. I know most pets with fur can be described as cute. I myself had rats, dogs, cats, but I would like to plead my case that these animals may actually be objectively cuter than anything else on the planet. Look at their squishy faces. And a cool part about ferrets is that they aren't just pretty faces either, which leads me to my next point. Ferrets are also incredibly intelligent. Their brains are particularly gifted in the art of problem solving. And that means a ferret will treat your home like a giant puzzle or a choose your own adventure palace for play every single day. If you give them enough things to rummage through, pull apart, squeeze through, jump on, your ferret is very capable of entertaining themselves for hours on end. And if you're like me, you will gladly sit and watch as a very willing audience member. Just don't be surprised if they try to get you involved too. Now, when you combine a cute animal with super intelligence and then give them a ridiculous Dr. Seuss body to carry out numerous complex schemes, there is literally nothing they can do that won't make you laugh. And their desperate determination makes it even funnier. This is why many people consider ferrets to be the clowns of the animal kingdom. Now, whenever I talk about ferret intelligence, I can't help but mention my friend, the trained ferret, who has a wonderful YouTube channel dedicated to showcasing what these incredible animals are capable of learning. I will link to her channel in the description below, so make sure to do me a favor and check her out. When your ferret is done performing their latest disjointed rendition of Rambo meets Ocean's Eleven meets Swan Lake, they will probably be pretty tired because ferrets are known to sleep about 15 to 18 hours per day, according to Ferrets for Dummies. So that means a lot of long, deep naps are commonplace. And this leads us to our next pro. Some ferrets can be very cuddly when they want to be. The key is some, and I'll touch on this point quite a bit more in the con section. But if you do happen to develop a relationship with your ferret where they welcome a good cuddle sesh every once in a while, it's magical and in my opinion contains some sort of healing powers. My first ferret moose was an amazing cuddler and it was a huge source of stress relief for me. As Albert continues to get older, he enjoys cuddling more and more. And then there was Newt, who not so much, but that's another story. Next, I wanna talk about how varied the personalities of ferrets are. Like I said before, I've had other furry critters in the past, but none of them seem to have such unique, differing personalities as my ferrets. For instance, Moose, my very first ferret, was a big cuddler and extremely friendly and trusting of just about everyone. At the same time, he became very aggressive towards ferrets he didn't know. Moose also had only two loves in his life, his straw hat, and an old drain hair catcher from the shower. Newt, on the other hand, was a wild child. His life mission was to escape whatever home or room he was in, even if it meant jumping off the balcony. We didn't even really find the need to ferret-proof a lot of our apartment until we got Newt. Newt loved to steal people food, particularly tortilla chips. He also kept a very tight routine and oftentimes would put himself to bed back in his cage at exactly the same time every single night. Albert's personality is more like a yellow lab. He is always down for a good time and always seems to find something to laugh at. He doesn't love to cuddle as much as Moose, but he really loves to play. Albert's favorite toy is every toy ever invented, ever. He literally has no discretion. 
The different personalities make it fun to figure out unique ways to make each of your ferrets happy. For Moose, that meant making time to cuddle on the couch together. For Newt, it meant leaving objects around the house that he could climb on. And for Albert, it means literally buying 20 stuffed gorillas from the dollar store. I don't know, it's what he likes. Next up, I'd like to briefly share some incredible stories from the community about the impact ferrets have made in their lives as one of my pros. But first, if you're new to my channel, my name is Haley and I make educational and entertaining videos about ferrets. So if you enjoy my content, now is a perfect time to like, subscribe, and turn on that notification bell. The next thing I wanna talk about on this list should probably be pretty obvious by now. In my opinion, and in the opinion of several people I interviewed, ferrets can be a great boost for mental health. I talked to one person who suffered from PTSD, and they told me that their ferret could be there for them when they woke up frequently in the middle of the night. Their ferret was always available for 15 to 30 minutes of silly, chaotic playtime while this person tried to calm down. They found these interactions relaxing and distracting. So afterwards, they had an easier time getting back to sleep. I talked with another person who has a disabled son, and she also mentioned what a great comfort his ferret provided him too. Ferrets are highly social animals, and once you spend enough time with them, they won't just tolerate you, they will love you like family. In fact, when I interviewed around 30 ferret owners over the phone years ago, in order to really understand what was at the heart of their love for ferrets, do you know what most people said? They said, it's the bond. It's the surprisingly deep bond you can form with these odd, hilarious creatures. And you never truly understand it until you have one for yourself. A common question I often get is, how do you bond with your ferret? Or how do you get them to cuddle more? So I actually made a video on that topic that I will link to in the description below. Now I'd like to talk about some more practical upsides to ferrets, like how you don't need a ton of space to keep one healthy and happy. Unlike a big dog, ferrets don't require a large backyard to run around in. And in fact, um, a lot of ferret owners I know live in apartments. And as long as your ferret is not confined to a cage for a long period of time and has access to a few ferret safe, ferret proof rooms in your house, they should be pretty happy. I have an entire detailed series on how to ferret-proof your house room by room, so make sure to check that out, also linked in the description below. I will also link to some helpful ferret-proofing products as well. Ferrets also don't make nearly as much noise as a cat or a dog. They don't bark or meow constantly. They do, however, scratch at a door if they want in, which can get annoying if it's done in the middle of the night. The most common vocalization that your ferret will probably make is an adorable one called duking, which just means they are having so much fun playing they cannot contain their joy. It's kind of like hearing little kids laughing. It doesn't happen all the time, but when it does, it will surely make you smile. Ferrets actually have a lot of other fascinating behaviors too. I'll link to a resource that goes a bit more in depth on this in the description below. The next pro is a little touchy, so feel free to comment your own experience in the comment section. But it seems that ferrets have the capacity to get along pretty well with other non-prey animals. If they are raised from babies together, it seems to be even better. Of course, always use supervision and common sense. There is a long list of animals ferrets should not be housed with, which I will be covering in the con section later on. The next pro is a bit controversial too, but I would like to say the smell is not as bad as most people think. Maybe I just have a bad sense of smell. Or maybe the way ferrets smell offends certain people and not other people. You kind of have to decide for yourself what you think of this one. You can also check out the video I did on how to reduce ferret smell, linked in the description below. All I know is one time someone came over to my house to do some house maintenance. I warned him that he might see a ferret run across the room. He turned to me and said, no way you have ferrets. I thought you can usually smell them. So yeah, my house didn't smell like ferrets. So maybe they don't smell that bad. The next pro is their lifespan, or at least how long they are capable of living if they don't get sick. 
According to Ferrets for Dummies, ferrets can live up to nine to 10 years of age, but typically live closer in the six to eight range. This means that they are not a lifelong commitment like a tortoise or an African gray parrot, but they also have the potential to live long enough to create a lot of special memories together. And it's quite a bit longer than other small animals like hamsters and rats who only live about two to three years. Now I wanna to touch on the culture of ferret ownership. Because this animal is less well known and less popular than a dog or a cat, it seems to attract a very unique kind of person. When ferret owners meet other ferret owners out in the world, it's always a really fun day because it's like, you get me, you understand my obsession. There's great online communities you can join to become a better ferret owner too, some of which I'll link to below. And although some conversations on there can get a little heated, if you keep your eyes out, you can find more positive spaces to ask honest questions, learn, share differing opinions, and grow. Feel free to recommend some of your own in the comment section below. Ferret meetups are also a thing. I had one in my own backyard a while back which I converted into a ferret-proof play space. It was so fun to hang out with people I probably would have never otherwise had the opportunity to meet. Sometimes one fun common interest is all you need to make a lifelong friend. In my last pro, which makes my heart so happy, did you guys know there's actually such a thing as ferret shows, like dog shows? My dream is to attend one someday and I seriously cannot wait. As you can see, these delightful creatures have a lot to add to our lives. Coming up with this list was so fun too, remembering all the fun times I've had over the past eight years with my three boys. My first ferret moose will always hold a particularly special place in my heart because he demonstrated a lot of these pros so wonderfully during his lifetime. He literally changed the trajectory of my life. He was so awesome, in fact, that it compelled me to start this channel. But now it's important to come back down to earth and learn the harsher realities of ferret ownership that might help you realize that this is not the best choice for you. I dealt personally with a lot of the challenges that I will mention in this next video, as do many people in the global ferret community. So make sure to take some time to watch that one linked in the description below. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned something. And if this was weaselly the best thing you've seen all day, make sure to like and subscribe. Bye guys. Hello YouTube. I missed you. Okay. Ba ba da ba ba ba. Ha ba la 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 la. One year, we're back. We're doing it. We're doing it. We're doing it. Okay. Ha. Can you hear me? <laughs>